What's going on, people, and welcome to the next episode of the Crack a Pack series. Today, we are opening up a pack of Magic Origins. Uh, funny enough, this is a set I did not really open much of. Uh, I have a few cards from it, like Hangerback Walker. I've got my play set of those. I've got certain cards, but the card that I really want to get out of this set is Jace Vryn's Prodigy. I can speak, I promise. Uh, the card's great. It's sitting, technically, it's the second most valuable card in the set, but only by like a dollar. Uh, Amare. Amar Amaret's Archive, I can speak, Al Hamaretz, I think that's how you say it, uh, Archive is technically at $18, uh, Jace is right around $17, and then Hangerback Walker down at $13, so not a ton in value necessarily, uh, but Jace is sitting up there, so hopefully we can get that. Uh, as always, we're going to look at this from a pack one, pick one perspective, so we'll do the best we can to determine what we would get in a draft scenario. Uh, I will go ahead and say I'm not the best drafter, and obviously I didn't open much of this, so I didn't draft it, uh, but it is a kind of a core set, uh, so my hope is that it's not too crazy in terms of determining the first pick. So, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, our first comment here is Enshrouding Mist. It is an instant for one white. Target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn and prevent all damage that would be dealt to it this turn. If it's renowned, untap it. Uh, obviously a better combat trick in a renowned deck, which is a big mechanic in this set. Uh, but in general, I feel like it's just kind of okay. Uh, I think it's cool that you can untap it. It can serve as a defensive combat trick very, very well because obviously if you tap down, you attack with it the previous turn and then your opponent swings in, you can surprise them with this, which is awesome. Uh, so for that reason, I feel like it's actually pretty decent, but in general, it's not a huge buff. It's just plus one, plus one, but it does prevent all the damage, so you can hopefully get something with this. Uh, not first pickable, but probably not the worst card in the world. Uh, Eyeblade Assassin is a 2-2 two, two for two and a black. Uh, as it enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. This is also an elf assassin, uh, specifically elf, which I believe is fairly relevant in this set. Um, I think this is fine. I don't think it's amazing, but I do think it's okay. I think there are definitely cards that this would hit. There's a lot of, like, Thopter tokens and stuff, uh, so you can probably pick one of those off, so for that reason, I actually think this is decent. Uh, Majoring Bully is a 2-2 two -two for 1 and a red. It has Prowess, so whenever you cast a non-creature spell, uh, this gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn, and it attacks each turn if able. Uh, so this is basically a forced aggressive 2-2. Two -two. I think this is perfectly fine in a red deck. Uh, not amazing, but not bad either. I think it's on curve. It obviously has marginal upside if you can get some prowess triggers off of it, so I do like it. Uh, Grasp of the Hyromancer is one and a white for an enchant creature. Uh, the creature gets plus one, plus one, and has whenever this creature attacks, tap target creature, defending player controls. Uh, I do generally like this effect. I don't like it as much on an enchanted creature. Uh, I always give enchanted creatures a bad rap. I don't necessarily mean to because there are definitely some that are great, but uh, for that reason, I, I don't like that it opens you up for a two for one, so for that reason, I don't particularly like that. Uh, Aerial Volley is an instant for one green. It deals three damage divided as you choose among one, two, or three target creatures with flying. Uh, this is really great sideboard, uh, probably decent main board. I feel like there's enough flyers in this set that you could maybe get away with it, uh, though you will find matchups where it's probably fairly dead. Uh, I would not first pick this, but I do like it. Uh, Bone to Ash, this is my kind of card. So two and two blue for an instant. Counter target creature spell and draw a card. I love this. Uh, this card is notoriously just pretty good uh, in draft always. It replaces itself and it targets specifically creatures, which are obviously bigger in draft, really just in limited in general. Uh, for that reason, I really do like it. I think so far I like it better than the other two, though uh, that might just be down to play style. Uh, Yeva's Force Mage is a 2-2 two, two for 2 and a green. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. This is a great aggressive elf. Uh, it's perfect for a, like, there's, I believe the, the green-black deck is really the elf deck. This is perfect in that. Uh, it powers up one of your other elves that you can then swing in with. It also gives you another elf, so that's also a big, big plus. Uh, I don't know that I like it more to bo than Bone to Ash, but I do really like that card. Uh, this card's awful. Maritime Guard is a 1-3 for 1 and a blue vanilla creature. Really don't like it. Uh, not worth playing in my opinion, so we'll just go ahead and skip over that. 
Uh, Stalwart Aven is a 1-3 for 2 and a white. It has flying and renown 1, so when this deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't already renowned, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and it becomes renowned. So basically, if you deal damage to the opponent, uh, it becomes a 2-4 with flying, which is fantastic. I think I like that more than Bone to Ash, to be honest. I think that's a good card. Uh, Sigil of Valor is an artifact for two. It is an equipment. Uh, whenever the equipped creature attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each other creature you control, and it is an equip cost of one. I think this is, like, okay. Uh, not great. I think in, like, a low creature count deck, this is much better. Uh, I say that, but then it doesn't really... It It's... It's one of those weird cards. The reason I say that is because obviously it wants you to attack alone with a singular creature, but if you have enough creatures to make it worth it to attack alone, why would you not just attack with all the creatures? Uh, so for that reason, I'm not a huge fan of that card. Uh, Gnarl Root Trapper, a 1-1 one, one for 1 black. You can pay 1 life and tap it to add green to your mana pool. Uh, spend this only to cast elf creature spells. You can also tap it and target attacking elf you control gains death touch until end of turn. I love this card. Uh, I would, there's actually been a lot of good elf cards. I might force elves a little bit. Uh, this seems like a really, really good payoff card for that. Uh, Ram Roller is a 2 3 for 3, an artifact creature juggernaut. Uh, it attacks each turn if able, and it gets plus 2 plus 0 oh, as long as you control another artifact, uh, which is huge. Obviously, you want to be prioritizing more artifacts if you take this. Uh, I do think it's a pretty decent card and it fits in every deck, but I like the elf a little bit better. Uh, and our rare, unfortunately, is not a Jace. It is a Displacement Wave for X and 2 blue. It is a sorcery. Return all non-land permanents with converted mana cost X or less to their owner's hands. Uh, this is very reminiscent of uh, a number of other cards in cube and things like that, but a uh, very powerful effect. I don't know if it's at its best, though, in a like Magic Origins set, only because you don't have a whole lot of fast mana to, to reamp and sort of make things work. So I don't really like that. Well, uh, this is probably going to be the pick, so uh, we did get a foil rare, Gaia's Revenge. It is an 8-5 for 5 and 2 green. It cannot be countered. It has haste, uh, and it can't be the target of non-green spells or abilities from non-green sources. Uh, this card is a huge bomb. Uh, definitely, definitely the pick, though we do actually have a couple of other decent cards, but this is obviously just one of the best green bombs, I think, in the set, uh, and for that reason, I would definitely pick it. So. Hopefully you guys agree. If you don't, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, as always, though, please make sure to like and comment if you enjoyed this video. And make sure to subscribe, of course, to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. We have got tons of it for you that we hope you'll enjoy. Uh, this is episode 170, by the way. We are kicking out with these. These are awesome. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying them. I am going to get out of here, though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.